I want to give a bit more context before I get into the meat of this video. If you already know about stable diffusion and don't really care about me, you can skip ahead using the time codes below. I won't be offended. I recently took a week off from work and during that time I started watching Being Puppycat with my other half. Feeling inspired, I decided I was finally going to try and figure out frame by frame animation in Photoshop. The idea being that I'd learn some new skills and by the end of it, I'd have an asset I could use for a looping music video. I spent three long days creating this loop, building the scene, sourcing the Photoshop brushes, doing the line work and then creating the poses for the characters, using Photoshop as an animator for the first time in my life. And although I was happy with what I managed to get made, it still felt like a lot of time for something so basic. For context, during the pandemic I decided I would make a 5 minute animation pilot which ended up being tween based to save on time and it still took me almost half a year to finish. It left me wondering if there was a more efficient way of getting animation done. And then Corridor Digital dropped this video and it was the catalyst that got me to take a look at Kitbash animations again. Something I'd already messed around with nearly half a decade ago, but now my curiosity was piqued again. So what is Stable Diffusion anyway? Well, it's similar to other AI art generators like Midjourney and DALI, but it's open source instead and free to use, no credits required, with fair licensing terms permitting you to use the artwork in a variety of ways, excluding any malicious use cases. Like you can't use it to frame people or for crime, that's a big no-no. You go to prison probably. But if you are using it in a legit way, you can use it for commercial use. And that was enough for me to YouTube some tutorials. And I discovered this guy, AI Trepreneur, a content creator who's vastly more experienced than myself. And if you're serious about making AI art, I recommend that you go to their channel and subscribe to them before you do it for me. You'll learn a lot more about the technical side of this software. But to get it installed, you want to create a folder for all your stable diffusion files. Download install Python, make sure you go on custom install and tick pretty much everything. Download Git, when installing it, change the default editor to Notepad. Download AI Trepreneur's dependency folder, export it using WinRAR or 7-zip. Then in your stable diffusion folder, move your mouse over the browser, click into it and type CMD, press enter and then you'll open the command prompt window. Then you can either copy and paste from the description below or type in git space clone https colon slash slash github.com slash automatic in capital letters 1111 slash stable dash diffusion dash web UI. Hit enter and it'll install. Then select the model.ckpt file and control plus X. Go inside the stable dash diffusion dash web UI folder and then the models folder. Hit control plus V to paste it in. You're almost done. You've just got to move the gfpganv 1.4.pth file into the stable diffusion web UI folder as well. My God, that's a mouthful. Close the previous command prompt window if you have that open. Then double click on the web UI dash user.bat file and it'll install the dependencies that allow you to run stable diffusion. This can take some time, but typically you'll see things happening within the command prompt window after a couple of minutes. I would suggest it's running. It can take up to 15 minutes for some people, which is enough time to listen to some of my terrible music. <laughs> uh, and if you are having issues with the install, because I did, I just ended up restarting my machine and it worked fine the second time that I tried it. Once it's all done, you'll see something that says running on local URL, followed by a HTTP colon and a bunch of numbers. Highlight that and copy and paste it into your web browser. If that opens, congratulations, that's the hard part done. Now, anytime you want to open Stable Diffusion, just double click on the web UI dash user dot bat file, wait for it to do its thing, copy and paste the URL and get in the software and work. Type words and make art to the detriment of all the creative people who've ever existed before this moment in time. <laughs> ah. When you get into Stable Diffusion, you're greeted by this window. And basically, you can type in prompts and it's going to spit out images, which is bloody mental and it shouldn't be allowed. But if you are going to do it, I have it set up like this. Width 1280, height 768. It was the closest I could get to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio while keeping the resolution low for the initial image creation. I upped the batch count to 12 so I could get more options. And then for my little animation, I wanted the artwork to reflect the Studio Ghibli style. So I started my prompts with a Studio Ghibli inspired painting of a new star forming amongst dust clouds. And I got this incredible background in seconds. I saved the file, 
and then move to the image to image tab of the software. Now, Stable Diffusion has this amazing feature that's like a lottery version of Content Aware Fill in Photoshop. You drop an image in and then mask out an area where you want to put something else in. I wanted a spaceship. So once I'd filled in the space in the prompt menu, I typed a Studio Ghibli inspired illustration of a spaceship. I made sure the width, height and batch count settings were the same as previous as well. And then I rolled the dice until a ship I liked appeared, it, which is still daft that it can just do this. Um, doesn't feel right. And eventually I chose this one because of the edge light and the general design. It felt on theme with the rest of the scene. Maybe it's just because I'm bad with the software at the moment, but the feathering was noticeable where I'd masked, but it didn't matter as my plan would be to rotoscope this later anyway. And then I repeated the process one more time with a new image to add the little astronaut. I then moved to the extras tab where my plan was to upscale the background and also the final image. I set the resize to two, both upscalers to Lankzos, not to be confused with Zapdos, and generated an image with a higher resolution. And just like that, I had all my assets created. In After Effects, I created a new 1080p 16x9 composition with 24 frames per second. I dropped the background and full scene images into the timeline, duplicated the full scene, rotoed the spaceship, did the same for the astronaut, I then duplicated the astronaut two more times, changed the masks so that each of the images was just the left arm, right arm or body. I moved the anchor point of the arms to where the shoulders would be, pick whipped the arms to the body to make a basic rig, added CC bend it to the arms, animated them using a ping pong loop, and then scaled and changed the position of the astronaut's body from the start to end frame. Finally, I animated the position of the background and boom, done. I made this composition faster than was able to make this video around 30 to 45 minutes from conception. It's, it's kind of disgusting, right? I spent days making this, half a year making this, and, and this took me a lunch break. And you could argue it looks nicer than anything I've ever made. When I first learned about AI art, I was skeptical about the ethics and worried about the creative industry that I'm very much a part of. I've worked for a subsidiary of Epic Games. I used to be a motion tracker and as part of that, you were building the data set that went on to become MetaHuman. And one of the reasons I left was because I felt like motion tracking was going to be automated out and that maybe if I went for something more creative, I'd be safe. But I think automation is coming for us all. And in a way, I already see it firsthand. I now work in a creative agency and because it's such a fast paced environment, I've had to get used to churning out content quickly. There are so many projects and deadlines. You really do need to find ways to cut corners to get through the work. You'll use asset libraries, stock video sites, motion templates, music licensing services, you name it. If it's going to save time and help you hit the deadline, it's going to be used. And I've always been torn with this because there's a sense that the work isn't completely your own. Although, does it really need to be? You become less of an artist and creative laborer with these tools. You instead develop into more of a producer, director. And I'm not sure AI art generators will replace creative workers. I think if anything, the tools will be used to enhance what we're already doing. Whatever you believe, AI is here to stay and it's only gonna become more capable in our lifetimes. So what I'd say is if you are a creative person fearful of this technology, it might be time to get to know your enemy. It's going to be hard to beat.